new intro so much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two-year period plus that i've been doing this um thank you for showing your uh love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you men are suing walmart for discrimination after alleging that police handcuffed them at a store while they were trying to return a television last year Dennis Stewart and Terrence Richardson were visiting a Walmart in Caro, Texas on September 10th of 2020 to return a defective television when they stated that white Walmart employees accused them of stealing. The staff allegedly called police. The men alleged in a federal lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of Southern District of Texas that they were placed in handcuffs despite Stewart showing Walmart employees the receipt for the television. Quote, the police showed up, detained, and handcuffed both Dennis and Terrence in front of the store Store where other store customers looked on as they entered and exited the store. The lawsuit alleges that the employees took an hour to examine the receipt and while the men were at the customer service counter, four white police officers quote approached from behind and instructed them to put their hands on their heads, ordered them to not move, searched their bodies and emptied their pockets and handcuffed them as criminals in plain view of everyone in the vicinity. Stewart, a church deacon and former police officer, and Richardson, a church pastor, alleged that they were wrongfully in prison and discriminated against due to their race. Stewart, Stewart stated that in the lawsuit that he felt so degraded after being put in handcuffs that he broke down inside of Walmart. After Stewart and Richardson were released from the handcuffs, a female Walmart employee allegedly screamed at them to take the TV and quote, get the F out the store and never come the F back. The men are also alleging that there is a breach of contract in a lawsuit since Stewart was not permitted to exchange an item or get a refund. Quote, we do not tolerate discrimination and take allegations like this seriously. When the claims were brought to our attention in April of this year, we investigated them. We are not getting into further details given the litigation and will respond as appropriate with the courts. The men have requested a jury trial as well as compensatory and punitive damage, according to the lawsuit. When plaintiffs attempted to return to television and and presented the Walmart receipt showing that the merchandise has been purchased there, defendants, Walmart, refused to honor the contract as they would have with a white customer. They accused plaintiffs of stealing the television, called the police, had plaintiffs handcuffed and paraded them in front of part of the store and had them held in the loss and prevention offices for hours. After knowing from empirical evidence that they had wrongly accused plaintiffs of stealing, having had them detained in handcuffs, defendants demanded the plaintiffs sign a document in order to leave the store and never return. Walmart further failed to honor the contract with plaintiffs by refusing to permit or allow them to return their television for either a refund or an exchange. Plaintiffs were not treated as white people would have been treated and there is no factual or legal excuse to justify how they were treated by the defendants other than their race. The offense conducted alleged in the case occurred back in September 10th of 2020. On that date, Dennis arrived at Walmart, went to the electronics department, and legally purchased a 58-inch Heisen television for the grand total price of $300.94. After paying for the television, he was handed a Walmart receipt to document proof of purchase. He then left the store with the television. Coincidentally, on that same day, Terrence, shopping alone at a totally different time from when Dennis had been shopping, brought several personal aid products for himself. Terrence had no knowledge that Dennis had shopped at the Walmart earlier in the day. They had not spoken that day prior to the respective visits to the store. Terrence paid for his personal items, totaling $46.64. He also paid a deposit of $48.50 on a layaway item held in the store. For both payments, Terrence was given a store receipt. Terrence then left the store without incident. Later that same day, Dennis called his friend Terrence to ask for assistance with unpacking and mounting the television at his home, i.e. mounting, lifting, placing, and putting the large television in place at his home. 
home. When they turned on the television, they noticed that the sound of the television was distorted. Repeated attempts at turning the television on and off did not cure the problem. At that time, Dennis asked Terrence to go with him back to the store to return the television to Walmart, with the expectation that he and Terrence will return with a working television, which they both could mount at the house. Terrence helped him. Terrence helped Dennis repack the television in its original box, along with all the instructions and the remote, and helped him lift the television into Dennis's vehicle and head to Walmart. Walmart has widely been known to agree to permit customers to return defective items within a specific time period for either a refund or exchange. Dennis complied with the agreement by returning the television on the same day it had been purchased. Both Dennis and Terrence entered the Walmart store, took the television directly to Walmart customer services. Dennis presented his receipt for the purchase of the television and was surprised by what happened next. A white male Walmart associate at the counter and two other white associates in the customer service department proceeded to examine Dennis's receipt and the television. This examination took approximately an hour. Plaintiffs both questioned the Walmart associates about why the television exchange process was taking so long. After receiving no answer, Dennis proceeded to ask defendant Jane Doe, a white male Walmart loss prevention officer, about the unusual length of time it was taking to complete the exchange. Jane Doe also gave no explanation for the delay. Eventually, defendant Jane Doe, a white female Walmart manager, appeared at the customer service department after she informed about Dennis's desire to receive a working television in exchange for the malfunction one. She returned with a new television and placed it on the side of the register in the customer service department. Plaintiffs then proceeded to approach the register as they believed that Walmart was about to honor the agreement. However, the expectation was wrong. Defendants refused to provide a working television. They also refused to refund Dennis's money. Instead, they had both plaintiffs, even Terrence, who had nothing to do with the purchase of the television and was there only to help his friend, detained, handcuffed, and escorted around the front of the store by police. This was not how Walmart typically treats a customer and was contrary to its policy of accepting returns and exchange. Dennis had fulfilled his obligation under contract, but Walmart reneged on doing its part. So basically from the article all the way to the PDF dealing with the lawsuit, we can clearly see and understand that yes, this was discrimination. Yes, this did have to do with race. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, given the fact that both of the customers, both of the black men have shown up to the store a grand total of three times, right? Once when you had uh, one man buy the television uh, and then the uh, same day, different hours, when the friend appeared at the store to buy personal hygiene items and they both left and paid for the items and also had receipts for those items within also means that Walmart had both of them on cameras during that duration of their purchases. Then the third time shows up when the uh, first man, right, Terrence, he bought a TV and he found out that his TV wasn't working. He decided that, OK, I'm going to take it back to get a refund to exchange it for another TV. And he also had the receipt and everything else that pretty much came inside of the box along with the TV took it back and uh, went to customer service, took them about an hour to look over the receipt and the items. For whatever reason, they 100% felt as if magically the black man stole the TV, which I'm not even understanding how he would be able to steal something that he's returning in the box, which the serial numbers and everything else should pretty much match up. Because when you scan stuff into the computer, it registers and it will also mark that item as being you know sold bought and or returned or defective and even though they pretty much did all of that along with having a receipt they didn't care about the receipt uh nor did they want to return um or refund him his money and they decided that hey we're just going to call the police on you for whatever reason because of what we feel right so, you know, like I said, this also goes into the whole bag of black people. We need to have our own everything because at no point in time would us having a store or ownership of a store, would we really have to deal with somebody calling the police on us because they feel that we stole a TV that we literally just brought back from our house because we bought it the exact same day, which means that, hey, um, 
any transactions that I made with this receipt, it should basically show up in your systems. Hey, well, you know, if I really did, you know, buy this item, it should also show up on your systems, right? On your files, along with the fact that you should also have cameras during that time where the receipt is marked. Like I said before, there's a multitude of ways that they could have uh, prevented this from taking place, that they could have stopped this from even happening. Um, like I said, he needs to sue uh, Walmart, and then he also needs to sue the um, the employees, uh, maybe in, in, a, in a civil suit, uh, sue the employees who specifically uh, targeted the both of them and call the police on them. And he also needs to sue the police department as well as for playing a part and not doing their detective work and trying to figure out on if these black men stole the tv or not they just came up rolled up to the scene it was like up oh, put your hands up don't move we're going to put you in handcuffs and we're going to pat you down like i said before at, at no point in time were these black men thieves at no point in time did these black men steal anything everything that you were able to hear is a clear-cut assumption of ignorance fear and racism that's it but like I said before, this is the system that we live in. Once you you know, are born and raised into a system that is not meant for your defense and or your survival or your upbringing, you know, this is what you have. We have people that will literally call their attack dogs, their land overseers, their dragons in order to take care of, right, or handle um, black men who they feel that, you know, they don't want you know within their proximity within their stores you know touching and purchasing their items even though those workers have no ownership over anything in that store other than you know the name the name tag and maybe the shoes that they're wearing they don't even own the vest that says walmart directly on but like i said before this is the system that we live in and this is why it is imperative this is why it is important this is why it should be a top priority for the black community to get rid of all of the bickering and all of the anger and rage towards each other and we need to focus all of our energy collectively um, in order to build in order to um, support um, you know each other when it comes to starting businesses so that we can alleviate the things that we can alleviate and then focus on the things that we can but anyways let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that i listed in the comment description below and as always peace love and stay tuned for the next video